What's happening, everybody? I'm Steve, and welcome back to Junk Drummer TV, where I give my initial reactions, my hot takes, and my analysis on the drummers of today and yesterday, and maybe tomorrow, if I stick around that long. I am a professional drum teacher and a gigging musician, and I have been for the last 20 years. It is now December, and we should all be getting into the giving spirit, so I would like to let everyone know that 100% of the funds that is sent to my PayPal account link in the description will be given to the Save the Music Foundation. If you don't know what the Save the Music Foundation is and you're not old enough to remember when VH1 used to push it a lot, the Save the Music Foundation is a charity that gives musical instruments and uh, musical materials and other such things to school systems that can't afford it. This charity really hits home for me. I grew up in a very low income area and I went through a school system that didn't have a lot of funding. So we could have really benefited from something like the Save the Music Foundation. Actually, when I posted this on my Facebook, I found out from the band director of my old high school that my old high school actually received a grant. And I didn't even know that when I decided to make this. So again, 100% of the donations made to me December 2019 will be sent to the Save the Music Foundation. I'll of course put the receipt on my community tab just to let you all know that I'm not scamming and that will be the uh, I'll do that after the first of the year. On today's episode we're going to be watching Ray Luzier play with Corn. I know Corn fans, David Silveria obviously and I will get to him. Unfortunately when I was researching to find a video because of when he ended his tenure with that band which is like 07, 08 I think there's not a lot of good video that really focuses on him. I will find something eventually I promise but until then let's check out Ray Luzier. Corn is a band that started a genre. Well, okay, them, Rage Against the Machine, maybe the first Deftones, a couple Deftone records, maybe, but they are the kings of new metal, and that's right, I pronounce the umlaut. What they did made all the sense in the world. They combined funk, hip hop beats with heavy music. And not really rapping. I don't really think of like Korn as like a rapping band like Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit sucks. They took heavy music and combined it with like hip hop funk drums. And when I heard Blind for the first time in like 1994, it was this beautiful synthesis of things that I loved. I loved funk music and I loved hip hop and I loved metal. And Korn, like geniuses, decided to put them together. Now, David Silveri is not with them anymore. I don't really know all the details of that, but now we're gonna be watching Ray Luzier and we're gonna be watching them do Freak on a Leash. always thought this sound just seemed like it was going to happen. Heavy metal music, funk grooves. He's monster. He's so slick. Your guys' turn. I love Jonathan Davis. Right off the bat, notice that He's playing swung, slightly swung. He's not playing really straight. Metal before that, there was groove in metal. Like if I think of like groove metal, I immediately think Pantera, you know, COC, Crowbar maybe. But there had been groovy metal, but nobody had just went the full force of just funk, hip hop grooves. And that's what Korn did. And that's what he's doing wonderfully here. Yeah, that one, two, three, a four, one, a two, three, a four. That's one, just enough to make it funky as hell. Ray Luzier is a monster player. Here's something that he does really well. When Ray got this gig, and I, you know, I think Joey Jordison played with them in between David Silveria. Ray Luzier had to come into a situation where 
the style of drumming was very, very singular. When you think of Korn, for me anyway, I think of like David Silveria playing like a hip hop drummer. Uh, and Ray Luzier had to come in and, and basically encompass that style you know their stylistic band he couldn't come in and say you know he's like a john bonham guy and come in and play like a john bonham guy he had to come in and, and deal with the oeuvre that david silveria had already set up and he's doing he does a wonderful job of it yeah all those ghost notes and stuff man man when i heard blind for the first time man it blew me up Immediately went out and got that CD. Yeah, man, you know, he's technically. I'm going to catch a lot of shit about this. So, various the man, but he's more technically proficient than David Silveria. Okay, this groove right here. Now I get to talk about another band, and I love uh, trying to figure out uh, a band's influences. This groove right here, and I always thought that David Silveria was very influenced by him and that band, and it is a band that does not get enough love because I think that they are one of the most influential bands of the last 30 years. This groove right here, it, it's a more involved thing than he would play. This is Mike Borden all day. This is a very Faith No More influenced drum beat. I think Korn in general was very influenced by Faith No More. You know, a lot of people even say that Epic, you know, made new metal, you know, that, that hip hop metal fusion. And that was like one of the first times that we had ever heard it. And this groove right here, I've always thought that this would be, if Mike Borden was more of a virtuos virtuosic type player, this would be a groove he would play. Man, him, time, him having to go all the way back there for that gong drum, that's really hard. <laughs> that's cool as shit. Notice what he does right there after that breakdown, after the chorus. He slows the time down and then brings it back up. We have to watch that again. And brings it back in like right there that that drum feel you know i know that's not much of a drum feel with a, a one you can hear how swung that is that's not a one but uh you know all the drum feels and all the feel, the groove uh, the rhythmic feel of everything he's doing has that feel into it you know the 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 base the base pattern of this is you know one a two three eight four now if you're to play that straight that would sound like this one a two Four. But because he's swinging pretty much the hell out of it, especially right here, one, two, three, four. It's it's a hard groove to keep consistent. Yeah, man, Jonathan Davis definitely liked Mike, Mike Pat. You can't talk about him without talking about Jonathan. Uh, like the way he ends that drum fill and ends on that three and a four e on the e that's just syncopated heaven instead of stopping on those real strong downbeats uh, stopping on those e's and us i think it's sexy Here to yeah yeah man that's almost like the groove to be aggressive by faith in the Lord. influences man you take your influences you imitate and then you innovate mr ray luzier <laughs> Okay, that's a subtle little cool thing that he's doing right there. Sound production. 
everything that he's been doing up until this point, he's been playing basically a rim shot with the uh, stick, you know, sort of in the middle of the snare drum and getting that big hulking fat sound right here on this breakdown notice he takes the stick and he brings it farther back here and moves it back to the to the rim and he gets a a, a more high ping sound listen to the sound right here that when he comes back in and how much different it is from the snare drum sound before sound production i talk about that a lot if you're one of those drummers that just thinks of here's a sound here's a sound here's a sound here's a sound and you don't think about how you can coax different tones out of each drum with your uh, technique and the way that you hit accents and taps you are handcuffing yourself to just have you know if you have a one up one down you've got you know with the bass drum you got four different sounds but if you can think like this every drum has a different sound that you can produce check this out when he comes back in and hear how much different the snare drum sounds here yeah, see, he's moved that back and he's getting more of like, you know, that high pinky sound that you get when you're back here on the snare drum. When he comes back in, and now he's to that big fat sound right there. I love that Jonathan Davis does this. It's just lunacy. It's insane. Man, when we heard this for the first time, we'd never heard anything like this, man. Korn doesn't get enough love, I think, as being one of the most innovative bands for the last, like, 25 years. No one had done this. No one had synthesized heavy music and hip-hop funk, funk rhythms, man. They are the godfathers of this stuff. Now, that being said... Uh, they did spawn limp biscuits, so that's a that's a pretty heavy sin for anyone to have to to bear. Everybody get the fuck there it is. You know, we've heard me talk about this before. It's the Black Sabbath principle. When you want to be heavier, play less on your ride source. Right here, he's playing that quarter note. for the fans to see him stick flip. Unfortunately, a lot of fans will be like, oh my goodness, he's sticking, flipping his sticks. Not realize that they're not, yeah. <laughs> ah, I love that little interlude right there. That's so cool. I'll uh, be able to say, and like, you know, uh, non-drumming fans sometimes don't get it there'll be people go home like he was flipping his sticks it was so cool and they won't realize that they're seeing one of the baddest drummers in the world play i gotta bring that back i love this little interlude where he plays on this cymbal stack over here make sure i go back far enough right here I was in a band with a guy who had been signed to Interscope, and when they got their big money from their record contract, first thing their drummer did was take lessons from this guy. This guy was a professor at MIT, I think. I love these big, huge drums he's got over there. Yeah, I noticed right there when he played that double bass pa bass part there was just this much slung, swung. Do -ka -do -ka -do. That's where the funk's at. You gotta catch it. Yes. 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 When you do the big stick flip like that, man, you better catch that shit. Whoo, Ray Luzier, a perfect example of being, you know, first a hired gun and then a, a member of the band. And coming in and encompassing the style, the really heavily stylized drumming of David Silveria and make it your own. You know, this is a band that like, if you come in and you play corn, you have to be you have to be a corn musician. You know what I mean? You're, like I said, you can't come in and be like, I'm a prog dude. I'm going to play all my prog shit. Can't do it. You have to play in that sandbox that David Silveria set up. And Ray Luzier does it beautifully. Uh, I think a big thing that you could uh, get from this is 
be ready for anything that the gig will call for, which means when you're practicing, say you're playing in just like a country band, you got to make sure that you have all of your other styles ready because you don't know what the next phone call will be. I know one of the gigs he had before Corn was like David Lee Roth, and there are no two styles of like you know music drumming wise different from like DLR, who was probably playing like Van Halen tunes and you know DLR uh, solo stuff to this which is like it's like like this style is like if 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 brother quest love and mike borden had way more chops that's what this style is and ray luzier does it wonderfully uh i can't recommend at least for me the first three corn records i wore them out uh, I, of course, I listen to them on CD. I think they're amazing. I think that they are a groundbreaking band that does not get enough love uh, in the sense of them basically creating a new genre of music. And man, if you can do something like that in your lifetime, something that, that's that, you know, uh, uh, changing the face of music, man, you've done something with your time. So, uh, if you all enjoyed that, please remember to give me a like, comment, and share. Please give me a double tap on the subscription and the notification bell. Also, again, 100% of the donations given to me in January will be going to the Save the Music Foundation. My PayPal uh, is in the description. And remember, keep practicing until it's easy.